Okay. So, I'm here to talk about culture. It's, uh, we hear this word a lot, but sometimes we seem to forget what it's all about and how important it is to us, you know, as a people, as individuals, even to our economy. You know, culture can be a very important tool. And uh, we always hear the Salawikain. Are you familiar with this? Ang hindi marunong lumingon sa pinanggalingan ay hindi makakarating sa paraloon. So what does that mean? People, if you forget your history, if you forget where you came from, we won't be able to move forward as a nation. No? So, close your eyes. And before anything else, who's from Luzon? Visayas? Mindanao? Ha! Ah, what happened to Mindanao? One, two. Close your eyes. Think of your hometowns. Imagine what distinct characteristics or what landmarks tell you that you are in your hometown. Can you picture it? Yes. Can you? Yes. What would happen if those landmarks suddenly disappeared? Will it still be the same? Can you still call your hometown your hometown? Is it still the same place? No? You know, open your eyes, thank you. We have to start thinking about our future and what we will be turning over to the next generation. No? The Philippines actually, and I, I, I dare say this, we have a very weak identity as a people. No? We are so influenced by so many cultures outside our country, we forget who we are actually as Filipinos. No? And uh, that's why one of my personal advocacies really is strengthening our cultural heritage, making people aware about what our cultural heritage is all about. You know? Because this is who we are as a country. What is cultural heritage in the first place? You know, it is a totality of properties preserved and developed over time and passed on for posterity. So it's not something that you build today. You know? I remember there was, there was a city in uh, Luzon there was a uh, function hall that looked old, and then the city council wanted, it, wanted to declare it as heritage. Because it's not So that's not heritage. No? It's something that you don't, you can't build overnight. Hindi pwedeng, itatayo mo to ngayon, this is our cultural heritage. No. It is something that your parents passed on to you. It is something that your grandparents passed on to your parents. No? It's something that is passed on to us by our forefathers. No? It's a uh, people's cultural heritage is the national memory. You know? So this is something that uh, we inherit. In fact, for thousands, hundreds of years, thousands of years, this is something that is passed on to us. You know? It refers to all forms of human creativity. What are examples of human creativity? Music, art, painting, dance. Architecture, no? these are forms of human creativity. Literature, no? the arts. No? It refers to all forms of human creativity by which a people and a nation reveal their identities. Again, no? heritage is the identity of a country. No? And tangible heritage, there's actually several types. You have tangible, intangible. What is intangible? This is something that you cannot touch. No? So this is something that you can see, you can hear, music, dance. No? But when it's something that you can touch, it becomes a uh, material expression of national memory uh -huh. or the cultural heritage. So let's go around the country. Uh, one thing that uh, I like doing really is exploring no? places. Because I believe no? that the best way for one to really appreciate what our country is all about is when we actually go around and explore. Hindi lang siya lakwacha eh. Alam mo, it's not just you know, going out, having fun, but it's really seeing what the country is all about. So, let's take a look at some of our really nice cultural heritage attractions. So again, no? uh, the DOT is, has started the More Fun in the Philippines campaign and uh, one of the iconic posters would be the uh, Rice Terraces of the Philippine Cordillera. So, 
going upstairs, more fun in the Philippines. So, one of my favorite places actually is Batanes. Who's been to Batanes? Lapa. Wait lang, before I start my slides, can I ask everyone to stand up? Let's have a little test. Last month standing tayo ha. All those who have visited five provinces, there are 80, uh, 80 provinces. Five provinces or less, sit down. Five or less. Five or less. Ha? Maraming tayong probinsya, we have 80. Luzon, in, in Luzon, in the size, in Mindanao. Ten or less, sit down. Oh. Oh, no. Fifteen or less. One five, twenty or less, twenty. Twenty five. Wow, we mga lahat ay ba? Thirty. Oh no, one person left standing. Thirty. Let's give her a big round of applause. You know, sometimes we take our country for granted. No? We only know certain destinations, the popular ones. But let's go around. No? Batanes no, is our northernmost province. Uh, it is uh, very uh, pristine up to now. So again, very unique architecture as well. These are the stone houses of the Ibatan. Uh, they are built actually to to adapt to their uh, environment. Of course, alam natin, binabagyo lagi ang uh, Batanes, no? So the walls of the houses are very thick, no? So these are the stone houses of the Batan. But they also have their own churches as well. Where is this? Where, where? Pauai. What is the claim to fame of Pauai? Claim of, ano yung, ano, ano yung designation niya? What is its designation? The Pauai Church is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. No? Uh, we actually have five inscriptions here in the Philippines and Pauai Church would be part of the Baroque Churches of the Philippines. And basically, they represent no, uh, a, uh, our churches and earthquake architecture. In fact, it's called Baroque, uh, Earthquake Baroque. No? Uh, why? These churches were built to withstand earthquakes because we all, we, as you all know, we have a lot of them here in the Philippines. And uh, notice the bell tower is separate from the church. Why? Same as Dumaguete. Why? Any guess? Yes. Serves as a watchtower. That's one. But the major consideration is Yes. The reason why the tower is separate, in case of an earthquake, the tower topples down and will not damage the church. So, yeah, earthquake baro. Another church which is a UNESCO World Heritage Site is Santa Maria in Ilocos Sur. Of course, this is Vigan. The historic town of Vigan is also a UNESCO World Heritage Site. No? In fact, Vigan was chosen among 28 entries from around the world just last month during the 40th anniversary of the UNESCO World Heritage Convention as the a best practice, the best practice in world heritage management no? all over the world. So imagine, no? the Philippines is now setting a trend for global conservation. This is vegan, no? Cagayan Valley has a lot of uh, old brick churches. This is uh, the this guy. Of course, my favorite, one of my favorite UNESCO World Heritage Sites would be the Rice Terraces of the Philippine Cordilleras. Who has been to Ifugao? Ifugao, no? Not that much, but I do hope you take time to, uh, to visit this place because this is basically one of our most iconic attractions. No? The Rice Terraces of the Philippine, Philippine Cordilleras. And, just like vegan, good news happened to the Rice Terraces of the Philippine Cordilleras. They were removed from the World Heritage in Danger list this year. So, again, no? 
The Philippines is now becoming a uh, best practice in work, uh, cultural heritage management. This is, uh, we actually toured uh, Ifugao and uh, they invited us for the rice harvest. So, sabay kami nag-harvest ng rice. And unlike the lowlands, alam niyo kung paano mag-harvest ng rice sa Ifugao? Meron kang blade dito sa dalili. Isa-isa yan. One at a time. You cut the stalks one at a time. And then each bundle has the same number of stalks. So again, no? It's part of the cultural traditions of the Ifugao. So as you can see, they're holding the stalks so one by one. Very dangerous also, so careful na careful kami. Habang pinuputol namin, may play dito na sinusuod. Of course, uh, we, we were shown all these traditions. No? This one is Mayoyao, Bangaan, no? Pampanga. Close by has uh, a lot of cultural heritage as well, old houses. The Giant Lantern Festival happened last Saturday. If you haven't seen this festival, you have to see it at least once in your lifetime. 20 uh, foot lanterns, 5,000 to 7,000 light bulbs, all manually controlled. Definitely, it's a uh, uh, cult uh, cultural attraction you shouldn't miss. Bulacan, this is San Miguel de Mayumo, Biak Nabato. Where's this? This is what? The Aguinaldo Shrine. This is what? A little bit more difficult, but this is something that we, I hope we get to find. The reason I'm showing you these pictures is because this is our identity. This is part of our history. This one is in Maragondon, Cavite. What is this the claim to fame of this house? Ayan na, oh. bahay na the Bonifacio Trial House. Dito siya nilitis. At dito naman, ano to? Ito ang lugar kung saan pinatay si Andres Bonifacio. No? So they built a monument just recently. So these are aspects of our history that I hope you get to explore. Alam nyo, malapit ng Christmas break, tapos may summer break. So, you know, you, you try to organize trips with among your barcada, no? Ito, saan to? Corridor. no? It's part of Cavite, not Bataan. No? It's part of Cavite. Laguna. This, which town is this? Sino taga Laguna dito? Wala. Wala. This one is Pila, Laguna. It's a heritage town of Laguna. Next town is, of course, Lumpan, known for the embroidery. No? Batangas. Ito, this is the biggest... Uh, Colonial Church in the Philippines. Taal Batangas, that's right. This is the Taal Basilica. Taal is a heritage town as well, no? This is one example of the house in Taal. Ito. Ano to? These are the Angono petroglyphs which can be found in... What town? Binangonan. Oh, hindi niya alam yan, ano? So, the Angola Petrogrips are actually in Binamona. Ito, anong festival to? Godless Festival. This one? Pahiyas, no? Marinduque, Boac is a heritage town. Romblon is a heritage town as well. Who knows this? This is the Puerto Princesa Underground River, which is also a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Ito, sa Bicol ito. What is this? It's a monument. Yes. <laughs> it's a monument. But what is it exactly? What's your guess? Oh, sige, a monument to? Serizal. The claim to fame of this monument is it's the first ever monument that was constructed to honor our national hero, December of 1898. No? So this is the very first, and it can be found in Daet, Camarines sa uh, Norte. I'm sure we all know this iconic shot of several ruins. One of my favorite shots of the volcano, you have the Ragat Church on the left, and Mayon Volcano on the right. Culture and nature together. At Yatiha. Iloilo also has a lot of uh, cultural heritage. In fact, the other church, which is a UNESCO World Heritage Site, is Yatao Church, yes. Sino taga Iloilo dito? Yan. O oh, ito, ano to? Oh. Ha, ano na? 
Yes, it's a, it's in San Joaquin. What is it? Would you believe that it is a cemetery? Yes, it's a cemetery chapel. No? So you can see that also is part of our heritage. In fact, um, in Metro Manila, in the city of Manila, the Manila North Cemetery, the La Loma Cemetery, and the Chinese Cemetery are important cultural attractions. Why? During World War II, much of Manila was bombed. No? But why would they bomb cemeteries? No? Since wala naman silang ano yun doon. No? So because the cemeteries of Manila were not bombed, they are now a, um, a collection of Philippine architecture from the Spanish colonial period to modern times. No? So in fact, there are, very, uh, there are a lot of art deco mausoleums there. So you can see actually the development of Philippine architecture from the cemeteries. No? This one, some of all Lord, yes, that's right. This one, yes, this one is Silai. You know what I like? It's too dark, no? But what, what, I, I like talking about this particular house. Why? What is this house now? Yes, what exactly? What is this house now? Sayang hindi makita masyado dito, but this house is now a bank. And in fact, this is RCBC, this little sign over here. Why do I like talking about this house? Number one, it shows you that you do not need to demolish old architecture in order to make it in, uh, significant or relevant to present needs. No? Second, you don't need to put large tarpaulins or uh, uh, signs or the golden arches or the big jollibee there to show what the establishment is. People know that this is a bank. So this is basically the way that the Sinaiyongs preserve their culture. They've been able to do that very well. It's another house in Sinai. Oh, Naman, what's this? Sinaiyong Hall. Ako pag hindi pa alam to, hindi ko na alam ng ko sa inyo. This one is in let's see, Sigihor, very close to Dumaguete, no? Bohol, this is the Bohol capital. You know what I like about Bohol? Um, it's a complete destination. No? You have nature, you have the chocolate hills, you have Panglao Island. No? You have adventure. Who's been to the Danao Adventure Park? You've been to the Danao Adventure Park? I'll show you a video later if we have time. But it's something, it's an exciting attraction. Hindi na siya culture, but I'll show, you, show it to you later. So, Bohol actually is a wonderful collection of our, uh, some of the country's best preserved colonial churches. In fact, there are more than 20, in fact, close to 30 of those churches. Every church still has its ceiling murals, no? no? This one is Dimiao, this is Hagna. All the churches, you go one after the other, they've been able to preserve their churches in Bohol. This church is uh, Duero, and in fact, what's, what's unique about this church is it's entirely made of wood. So you're not on the posts, you're not on the walls, it's all wood. No? So it, in fact, it might be the last wooden colonial church that is uh, still, you know, still standing. Cebu also has a lot of uh, cultural heritage, architectural heritage. What, uh, what church is this? Patrocinio hmm? is in which town? Well, no, very good. So this is the inside. This one. So, the Laguette. The Laguette. I get corrected. I don't know. Is it the Laguette or the Laguette? The, 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 so, sometimes in the Laguette, they say it's the Laguette. <laughs> so I don't, I, I don't know which one is which. Uh, this is the inside. Oh, this one. Argao. Yeah, very good, very good. Unfortunately for Argao, and it's also a challenge for us in the heritage conservation community, sometimes the parish priest likes to leave his mark. So, uh, Argao, as you notice, it has a polychrome, several colors in the ceiling. So it's too dark. No? Can you see it? The ceiling? It's a bit too dark, no? Unfortunately, there was one Monsignor who had a mind of his own and he turned off the lights for just one second.
So he had a mind of his own. Oh, it's still dark. There, there's the ano. You know, you know what he did? He painted the retablo gold and silver, so now it's the biggest trophy case in the country. <laughs> uh, that used to be many colors, and unfortunately, sometimes, you know, um, we have, it's a challenge for us, actually, to really educate also some members of the clergy, because they take the custodianship of the churches into their own hands, and do whatever they like with our colonial churches, so sometimes, uh, it uh, comes out as this. No? Unfortunately, it's very difficult to reverse the damage. No? You have to scrape out the paint and uh, try to find out the colors again. No? So unfortunately, that's what happened to our Gao. This one is where? Karkar, no? the Cebus uh, Heritage Town, no? Karkar. This is probably one of the oldest houses in the Philippines. No? This is in the Parian area, that's right. 1700s house. No? Yap San Diego. This one is in Southern Leyte, Paasin. Tapu, Northern Summer. It's a fortress church, the lighthouse. G1 is a uh, national cultural treasure. This church is very uh, thorny in our history. Eastern Summer. What's your guess? Yes, this is Balangiga. Balangiga, no? Why is it thorny? Because of the bells, no? Uh, of course, during the Philippine-American War, uh, the Filipinos raided the Americans who were in the town. They got massacred. Bumawi ang mga Americano, kinuha ang belts, kinuha sa states. So, now we want our belts back and there is a tug of war between who owns the belts because to the Americans, it is war booty. To the Philippines, it's part of our cultural heritage. No? Zamboanga, this is Zamboanga City Hall. What I like about Zamboanga, you know, very colorful culture, a lot of indigenous uh, groups, the Yakans, the Samas, the Tausugs, you know, the Bajaos also. Where is this? The Pitan, yes, this is the Church of the Pitan. Why is it important in history? Rizal was exiled here for four years. In fact, that map over there was done by Rizal himself. It's a Mindanao map and it's a national cultural treasure. This is a replica of where he stayed in the Pita. South Cotabato, another of my favorite places. This is which lake? Lake Cebu. Lake Cebu. <laughs> Seven Falls. No? This is Lang Dulay. She's a national living treasure. We have what we call the Gama Award. Kawat Manilik Hanan Bayan. It is a award which is of equal importance to national artists. No? And uh, these are people who are. Uh, are uh, protectors of the tradition. See, Lang Dunay was given the award for her knowledge in weaving the Tinalak fibers. So there are a lot of gamaba scattered all over the country. This is the anthropomorphic, anthropomorphic jar in uh, Sarangani. Agusan del Sur, what is this? Marsh. It's the Agusan Marsh. No? And what community? What community stays or lives in the marsh? Another in indigenous group. The Manobos, no? I actually got to stay here overnight. In fact, the houses, you see, that house is floating. They built the houses on top of logs and bamboo. Hindi yan solids and lalim. So it's up, they are actually floating houses. Walang kuryente. Even this school is floating. No? This is a classroom. Huh? Ah, I'll explain this. Bakit may beer? Ah... Uh, when you are a visitor there, you have to undergo a ritual, no? And that ritual is the elders will have to ask permission from the spirits about your presence and let them know that you are there because they believe that if they do not do that, something bad will happen to you. So part of the ritual, nagsindi kami ng kandila, nagalay kami ng itlog, at nagtagay kami sa mga espiritu. Yes, tagay sa espiritu and then tagay kayo na. No? So that's part of the ritual. <laughs> Beautiful. It's a very beautiful place. Uh, hopefully, it becomes a UNESCO World Heritage Site. It's very important because of uh, it is a staging area for migratory and endemic bird species. No? So, those of you who might want to stay in Abusa Marsh, it's a really beautiful experience. No? Thing Marsh. Where is this? This one is in Marawi City. Unfortunately, Mindanao Heritage is fast disappearing. No? 
And what do you call this house? This is a Toroga. No? It is a Maranao Toroga. And there are just a few of them left. No? While we are very strong in preserving, uh, or we are, there are a lot of people who want to call for preservation in Luzon, Visayas, we need more people in Mindanao really to preserve the aspects of Philippine culture there. This is one of them. As you can see, tat-tat siya ng election posters. And uh, mukhang mauulit na naman yan uh, in, in the next few months. No? Sulu, may kwento ako dito. Don't do this at home, ah. It's uh, because uh, I really wanted to visit all the 80 provinces, which I completed in 2010. No? So, nabisita ko na lahat ng provincia ng Pilipinas. I had to visit Sulu. So, first things first, I had to make sure I had contacts, no? And to make sure that people would actually take me around and take care of me while I was there. Unfortunately, during the time that I planned to visit Sulu, to me, get your flights from uh, Zamboanga to Colo. So I had to take a ferry, an overnight ferry from Zamboanga City to Colo. Nung pinibili ko yung ticket ko, syempre, nagtataka yung mga tao, sino to? Bakit siya pupunta ng Colo? So yung sales lady, parang ano, nakasar pa. So pagkabigay ng ticket sa akin, tawa siya, Sir, good luck! <laughs> Bakit good luck? <laughs> sabi mo, tapos kwento pa niya sa akin, Sir, yung, ano, yung ferry dadating po dyan ng alas 4 ng umaga. Ang suggestion ho namin sa inyo, huwag kayong lalabas hanggang pinabas yung araw. Anyway, hindi naman naalis yung barko hanggang gabi. No? So, but I had people to take me around. Uh, so, wala problema sa inyo ako sa barko. Later in the afternoon, I got a text from a friend, Hey, you should check out Quezon Beach. So, I told my host, Hey, let's take a look at Quezon Beach. Hello. When we got there, I was, I was shocked. It was one of the most beautiful beaches in the country. It can rival Boracay, you know, with its powder white sand and oil. You know. But unfortunately, you know, Polo and Sulu and ARMM, we still can't visit it because of the security situation. As much as we want to promote, you know, if only the situation gets better, we can actually uplift the lives of people there through tourism. You know. And, you know, uh, when I got back to Polo, my hosts, they introduced me to friends and the friends asked me, Oh, where did they take you? Uh, I said, Dinala ko sa, ano, sa Quezon Beach. Shock lahat. As in, I saw the shock on their faces and I said, Why? What's wrong with Quezon Beach? And, uh, nakita ko, nagagalit pa sila sa host ko. Sir, ano kasi, doon nangyari yung mga kidnapping tsaka beheading ngayong taon. <laughs> Buti na lang nakabalik ako in one piece, but I don't try it at home. But you know, saya, no? Even, even the agriculture there is very important. Um, I remember buying a durian for 30 pesos, ganito. Yung isang buong tali ng mango skin, 20 pesos. Pagka in season sila, limang piso na yung buong tali. Nung nandun ako, bibili, alam mo, purgang-purga ako sa lansones. Yung, yung basket ng lansones, nagalit ganito makalakit. Tinanong ko, magkano yan? Sir, 70 pesos. <laughs> Imagine if you can actually bring that to, uh, to Manila. But again, no, that's, just like, that's just an example of how, you know, how rich these places are. So, we've gone around the country, you know, and uh, I hope that we get to understand that. Let's go through this now. I'm part of the Heritage Conservation Society, and we want to be the prime mover and advocate for the preservation of good heritage resources in order to contribute towards the establishment of a society that preserves and values its cultural heritage through advocacy, volunteerism, project implementation, education, and information. We want a Philippine society that values and preserves cultural heritage in order to instill pride of place. We will always hear pride of place, no? Again, pride of place leads to a strong national identity. The Philippines still, you know, our national identity is still vague, no? We need to strengthen it. We need to nurture it, no? And our cultural heritage can help us do that, no? Unfortunately, we are losing quite a lot. Who knows about the high and high issue? We lost this building. We lost this building because uh, the mayor at that time said, I want to build the Hall of Justice. What was Heritage Conservation saying? You don't have to demolish this building. You can use this building and build your courts there. In fact, the Pinota Court could have been a very beautiful courtroom with a gallery. No? Saya, we wanted adaptive use. The mayor said, no, it's a gambling den. So they demolished it, and now it's a parking lot. No, it's not even a parking lot. It's an empty lot. 
they were never able to build their Hall of Justice. Meralco Building, one of our most beautiful Art Deco buildings in the country, we lost it early this year. You know, Manila is losing its heritage very fast. GSIS is a good, is good news. We were able to convince people to preserve the facade. They almost demolished it again for the Hall of Justice. But what? Beautiful one Arellano Art Deco facade will be part of the new facade. Antequera, this is another thorny issue. Uh, the NHCP has now come up with a uh, uh, with a uh, de declaration basically the town plaza should remain open spaces. Hindi dapat siya tinatayuan ng basketball court. Hindi dapat siya tinatayuan ng gymnasium. They should remain open spaces. And here in Antiquera, the town folks are up in arms because the mayor just built a multi-purpose hall. So even though the MHCP said no. San Jose was also in trouble, but the mayor took it. Imagine this beautiful plaza. You can see the church. Ito yung kanila plaza. Yan yung mga puno. Ito gusto sana gawin ni mayor. Tatayuan niya ng munisipyo. So again, we are fighting for our heritage. No? This one is also good news. They are restoring this as we speak. This one is bad news. This one is the house of Chodora Alonso in Pina Laguna. It just collapsed a few months ago. The reason? They basically took everything inside and transferred it to Bagak Bataan. Imagine, this is the last original Rizal house. Why do I say original? In Talambak, that is actually a replica that was built in the 1950s. The other Rizal house in Binondo mysteriously got burned several years ago. I always say mysteriously, but uh, I will not say uh, it was a... Uh, uh, how do I say it? No, never mind. It mysteriously got burned. So this one was the last original house of, that was related to Rizal, and now it's falling apart. No? Unfortunately, it's a very difficult issue. It's private property. The national government, even if it wants to buy it, it will be a very difficult process of expropriation. No? But unfortunately, yeah, we have to continue. So heritage conservation, built heritage is evidence of our history. It reflects our values. No? I talk about adaptive reuse. No? It's a creative mode of conservation that gives heritage structures new and alternative functions. So what are we saying? No? Uh, when we are preserving our, our heritage, you don't necessarily have to preserve it as it is. You can actually adapt it to current needs, to current requirements. In fact, here are some really good examples. No? Uh, before I go there. This is a uh, Australian sociologist, sociologist who said that if Kiapo were in Melbourne, the rich and famous would be scrambling to live in it. Imagine, who's been to Kiapo? What can you say about Kiapo? Huh? Crowded, polluted, noisy, messy. But why? Why would us Australians say that? It's because Kiapo. If you walk around, especially along Hidalgo Street, you will see all these old structures, no? Ancestral houses. So here's, here are examples of adaptive reuse. Meatpacking district in the US. These are warehouses that were transformed into trendy lofts, so very expensive place now to live in. Imagine warehouses, ginawang tirahan, ginawang mga condominium units, and there are now stores, no? designer stores. This is the big gallery of modern art in London. What did it used to be? Ano siya dati? What did it used to be? What do you think? It used to be a power plant. In, in fact, the power plant mall in Rockwell, the original plant, why is it called power plant in Rockwell? You are too young to remember. That used to be a power plant. No, power plant mall used to be a power plant. The plan really was to adaptively reuse the power plant and convert it into a mall. I don't know why it did not push through. No? So this is the inside of the gallery. So imagine the outside is preserved, the inside you can modernize. Speaking of power plants, this is a power plant that was converted into a mall, the Pratt Street Power Plant in Baltimore, Maryland. No? You don't have to demolish industrial heritage. You can actually make it, you know, make it uh, 
in classy and uh, it, it, it has character. You see, you can see how, uh, no, how they were able to preserve that. In Toronto, we have a distillery, which is now, again, no, it's a shopping district. Ito ang ano, na, na, this is a nanakayo ito. They did not demolish the building, Western Metal Supply Company, and they built the baseball stadium around it. So imagine yung building ngayon, merong pictures of. So it's part of the stadium. This is Singapore. We all thought that Singapore was ultra-modern, but in fact, they are preserving so many aspects of their architectural heritage. So, they're very uh, trendy attractions now, ito, mga old shop houses. No? But, the Philippines is not far behind. Who's been to Tutuban Mall? Did you know that Tutuban Mall was the main train station of the Philippines before? So, yung Tutuban Mall na yan, yan, that particular center mall used to be our main train station. It's now a shopping mall. This is a Tapacalera warehouse in Lawago, Locos Norte, which is now a museum. Do you know where this is? Do you know where our old airport used to be? Do you know where the runway is? Was? What street in Makati used to be the runway? Ayala Avenue, no? Makati Avenue and Paseo. These were the runway areas, no? And this building is still standing. In fact, it's in front of the Manila Peninsula, no? This is the Manila International Air Terminal, our old airport terminal, which is now the Filipinas Heritage Library. So if you go to the back, especially Kumanol Kinama Ilao, you can actually see this building. This is the original airport, international airport of the Philippines. No? In fact, this is where PAL, of Asia's first airline, used to fly from. So very historic. Gota de Leche is a milk station that was reused as NGO space. Orchid Garden Suites. What is uh, fantastic about this example of adaptive reuse, the old house was not demolished. They used the old house as a lobby of the hotel and built the hotel at the back. No? Really nice. This is an old water tank in uh, Roja City, Capiz, which is now in Museo. Oyster bridge, an old bridge turned into an oyster bar. So, you know, the old bridge. Amora Watchtower is now in Museo. And this is what I mentioned a while ago, this building, this house is now our bank. And this old town hall is reused as a library. So again, you know, we need young people to really fight for our culture. We need young people to fight for our heritage. Because if we do not do that, no, we will disappear as a country. We will disappear as a nation. Our identity will be overpowered by everything that is Western, everything that is Korean, everything that is Japanese, no? we, will, we will basically disappear if we are not able to preserve that aspect, those aspects of our culture. There is a law now, but I will not go through that anymore. And we now have another challenge. No? I, I end my talk with this challenge. There is a move to reclaim Manila Bay again. Imagine our sunset disappearing. They are going to build an island beside the CCP complex in front of the Yacht Club of the Philippine Navy. And we are now advocating really to stop this project. In fact, they already had a public hearing last week to satisfy their requirements, but uh, I hope that we continue to preserve no, this last historic uh, stretch of Roas Boulevard. No? It's the only stretch of Roas Boulevard that has not been reclaimed. And if we do not speak up, you know, if young people allow big business to dictate what they want to do, you know, we will basically lose everything you know, that we are fighting for. And this is something that I hope and invite you to join us you know, in the heritage community. So thank you very much. You know where to find me. Instagram, Twitter, and my uh, Facebook page. So thank you very much.